right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, clean slate. The time has come in Missouri. Marijuana offenses can be wiped from records. Warm Wednesday. Some of us may even hear thunder overnight Wednesday. It's all part of the changes the Weather First team is tracking tonight. But first tonight, breaking news. Illinois lawmakers banning assault weapons. We have team coverage from the Capitol. One of truly the strongest and best assault weapons bans in the entire country. To local checkout counters. Some that I've talked to said that's gonna jeopardize their livelihood. Just two hours ago, Governor J.B. Pritzker signed the assault weapons ban into law. Good evening. Thank you for being with us. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. Illinois will no longer allow the legal sale of assault weapons, high capacity magazines, or rapid fire devices anywhere in the state. Our team coverage starts with our political editor, Mark Maxwell, who's been in Springfield all day covering the latest developments. We got it done. Gun safety advocates celebrated at the State House Tuesday night as Governor J.B. Pritzker signed a ban on selling assault weapons into Illinois law. Illinois now officially prohibits the sale and distribution of these mass killing machines and rapid fire devices. The changes include new tracking measures allowing state police to publish serial numbers of stolen guns online. I think it's incredibly uh, important because the number of guns that get repeat uh, used in crimes is, is very high. The law spells out a list of banned guns and outlaws their sale, transfer, or purchase. The law keeps the legal age to buy a long gun at 18 and allows gun owners who already have a banned weapon to keep it on their private property but requires them to register the serial number with the Illinois State Police. Some Republican lawmakers but vowed to defy the new that, law. Uh, we will not comply and you're not gonna do a darn thing about it. Well, you don't get to choose which laws you comply with in the state of Illinois, let's be clear. No, I will not comply. Republican Darren Bailey lost his November race against Pritzker after a campaign where he called to void the state's FOID card. So when you say you won't comply, does that mean you won't register your gun with? That is correct. I have no intention of registering anything. Yes, there are, of course, people who are trying to politically grandstand, uh, who want to make a name for themselves by claiming that they will not comply. But the reality is that the state police is responsible for enforcement, as are all law enforcement all across this state. And they will, in fact, do their job or they won't be in their job. A new House and Senate swear the oath of office and kick off the new year Wednesday at noon. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. So what does this ban mean for gun stores? We continue our team coverage tonight with Laura Barczewski, who talked with a gun store manager about the impact this ban will have. Laura. And while stores can't sell any more of these weapons or magazines, sales that are already pending will go through. But overall, owners say this will have a big impact on their gun stores. This will be even considered an assault weapon by their definition. Yep. The manager of Kurt Smith's gun store, Thomas Petrakovich, in Belleville, Illinois, says the federal government classified a gun as an assault weapon by these three characteristics, which he doesn't agree with. The pistol grip, this does have a bayonet lug and a flash hider. It's guns like these that are no longer available for purchase in Illinois. Uh, the AR-15 will be one, uh, and then I assume it could be the AR-10s, which are just a higher caliber of the same gun. I know shotguns with a removable magazine will be on that list, and uh, that's probably, and then again, maybe certain handguns might be in that play. Petrakovich says the magazine limits are one of the biggest changes for gun owners. They're going to be limited to 10 rounds for the long guns, 15 rounds for the handguns. There is some handguns that have 20 rounds, 19 rounds. Now, will they make a replacement mag for that? I'm not sure. Under the new law, retailers can ship their current inventory and sell their remaining guns out of state. But he's heard from other store owners they'll likely lose thousands of dollars due to this law. So the, some that I've talked to said that's going to jeopardize their livelihood. Groups like Guns Save Lives say they're going to fight this new law. We're going to be filing in court within hours of the governor's signature. We anticipate getting a temporary restraining order from a federal court judge, and we're going to block its implementation uh, within a matter of uh, days of the governor signing it into law. 
Illinois residents who have these guns can show they were purchased before the law went into effect and they'll be able to keep them as long as they register them before next year with Illinois State Police. Mike. Laura, thanks. Tonight, Ferguson police are investigating a deadly shooting. Police say at least six shot spotter alerts sent them to the Visay Apartments on North Wind Estates Drive around 930 last night. When officers arrived, they found a man shot in the driver's seat of the car. He was taken to the hospital where he died. If you know anything, you're asked to call Ferguson police. Tonight, a St. Louis County man is being held without bond for attacking his father with a box cutter and setting his home on fire. His father is being treated for serious injuries. It all happened yesterday afternoon at this home on Aventine Drive near Fenton. Police say the suspect John Jockish told them God told him to do it. Tonight, car thieves are on the prowl in Creve Core, and their crimes are caught on camera. Just six days into the new year, police in the West County community had investigated five stolen cars. New tonight, our Robert Townsend reports how prevention is the key in curbing many of these crimes. Caught on surveillance video on New Year's Eve afternoon in Creve Coeur. Police say a man was putting air in his SUV at this gas station near Olive Boulevard and Schulte Road when two guys first looped around. One of them then hopped out of a black passenger car and stole the driver's running car. Three days later, a woman pumping gas at the same station when a bold thief pulled next to her and took off in her car. Her keys and purse in her vehicle, investigators say three cars were actually stolen from the one business in the past month. Yeah, that's pretty scary. And you have to be careful. Police are on alert trying to prevent the car thefts from taking off in the West County area. And I just be cautious, be aware when I walk up to my vehicle and, you know, try to check out the area and make sure it's safe. Police tell us as of Friday, criminals stole five cars from residents' driveways, gas stations, or other places. What's more, they say the victims either left their vehicles running or left their keys in their cars. And listen to this. Police say the last three years, more than 50% of the cars stolen here in Creve Corps were either unlocked, the keys still in the ignition, or the engine left running all wrong moves that make you an easy target. Police believe the thieves are hitting the low crime area because many people let their guards down. And you would think this would be nice and safe in West County, but there's crime every place. And that's why police stress to drivers to never leave your car running in a public place. Always be aware of your surroundings and immediately call 911 if you need help. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Tonight, a plan is in the works to bring e-scooters back to the streets of St. Louis. They have been banned since last summer after an increase in crime. Tonight, the Board of Public Service unanimously approved a measure to bring back electric scooters and bikes. There will be some changes, including curfew between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Speeds will be capped at 12 miles per hour, and there will only be 1,500 scooters. The streets department still has to approve the change, then companies have to make the changes. With the legalization of recreational marijuana in Missouri, a new opportunity tonight for some people who are behind bars to have their records expunged. Our Brent Solomon is live tonight with how public defenders across the state are busy working to clear those records. Brent. They certainly are, Mike. In fact, I'm holding in my hand right now the petition that those who are in custody right now for minor marijuana offenses can sign to have their records expunged. But keep in mind, for those who are in custody right now, expungement is not automatic. Prior to now, possessing up to three pounds of marijuana in Missouri could get you locked up. In November, Missouri voters said not anymore. Now, attorneys across the state are working to get people who are in custody for these offenses out. It is going to happen. Stacy Lannert works for the Missouri Public Defender's Office. The group now working to field calls from those in jails, prisons, and even halfway houses looking to have their records expunged. It should put them back in the position as if they were never convicted in the first place. Here's the petition the group has posted to his website. Family and friends of those who are impacted can work with attorneys to get their loved ones out of custody. This 
this impacts people with certain misdemeanor and felony offenses related to marijuana possession. But not so fast. Attorneys say there are some people in custody right now who won't be able to take advantage of this. If there was violence involved, if they were under the influence of driving, um, driving while under the influence or um, delivering to a minor those people do not qualify. As for those with marijuana offenses who are not in custody, they need do nothing. Expungement of their records will happen automatically. And when you have a possession of a controlled substance, sometimes that limits people from housing. It can limit them from receiving certain type of grants for education, something that's no longer considered a crime in Missouri. How can we put a record on somebody who who now quali wouldn't be convicted. And for those with misdemeanor uh, marijuana offenses, their records will have to be expunged by June. For those with certain felony marijuana offenses, they can have their records cleared by December. We're live in St. Louis tonight. Brent Solomon, five on your side. Tonight, Lotto Fever is running rampant over tonight's Mega Millions drawing, or maybe we should call it Mega Billions. Yeah, because tonight's jackpot is for $1.1 billion, the third largest in the game's history. So grab your tickets. Here are the winning numbers drawn about 30 minutes ago. They are seven. Look at this lineup. 13, 14, and 15 all in a row. Then 18, and the Mega Ball is nine. Blame game. A family forced from their home is now on the hook for their mortgage, a rent payment, and an expensive repair bill. I feel bad because I never know this would be happening. Tonight, the I-Team tracks down the owner of the company responsible. Popular infant sleepers recalled. Four years later, they're still being linked to tragedy. The reason they're still in homes tonight. From thunder to flakes, big changes are coming to the bi-state area in the next 36 hours. We're tracking the rain and snow potential, and just when the gusty winds deliver more typical January weather. Tonight, for the first time, we're hearing directly from the owner of the company that hit a gas line causing the home explosion in O'Fallon last year. The I-Team's Paula Vassan has more on what he says he wishes he'd done differently. The Stout family says they've been living in limbo for the past 10 months. It all started when a home next door to them exploded from a gas leak. The Stouts were blaming their insurance company, but now say they should have been blaming the contractors that hit the gas line. In an exclusive interview, the owner of that contracting company told us he's no longer running the business. It was March 1st, 2022. This home in O'Fallon, Missouri, exploded after contractors hit a natural gas line. Workers from JDK General Contractor were installing fiber optic cable. We've got cracks in the foundation. We've got cracks in the walls. We've got roof damage up here. We, we don't know how much damage is behind the drywall. For months, the Stouts were blaming their home insurance company. They had received about $60,000 for repairs, but said they needed far more than that. So they hired an attorney. In our reporting, we connected the Stouts with local and national insurance experts. The family wishes they had worked more closely with their insurance from the beginning. They believe they've been pointing fingers in the wrong direction. And I think insurance was doing the right thing and, and reaching out to try and help them. And um, instead, of, instead of blaming, you know, the contractors and the people that caused the damage, um, they went after the people that were trying to help them. We got on the phone with Georgia-based JDK general contractor, whose crew hit the gas line. Mario Franco told us he's no longer running the business and wants to see change. Knowing the reality of the dangers of installing fiber optic cable, do you think contractors need more insurance? Yeah, everybody need the bigger insurance because I see what happened. He told us he was required to have a $1 million insurance policy. It won't cover all the damage. He wishes he had double. What do you want to say to the families who've been affected by this explosion? I feel bad because I never know this be happening. A check of Georgia's Secretary of State website shows JDK General Contractor is still an active business. The Stout family says their struggle shows how contractors need not only bigger insurance policies, but more training. For the I-Team, Paula Vassan, five on your side.
Tonight, Fisher Price is once again announcing a recall of a popular infant-inclined sleep product after at least eight more deaths have been reported. It comes almost four years after a Consumer Reports investigation prompted a recall of millions of these products. The Fisher Price Rock and Roll Play Sleepers and the Kids 2 Rocking Sleepers have now been connected to 100 deaths. According to officials, even though they've been recalled, just under 10% of these inclined sleepers have been returned by consumers. That means around 4 million could still be in use. When a product gets recalled, it's the manufacturer's responsibility to both get it out of the stores and to alert people who already own it to stop using it immediately. And um, safety experts say that they just haven't seen Fisher Price or kids to do enough in that area. Parent company Mattel says Fisher Price has worked diligently to remove all recalled product from the market. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends babies be put to bed only in products that meet federal safety requirements for infant sleep, such as a bassinet, crib, or play yard. Growing scrutiny tonight for President Biden after it was revealed classified documents from his time as vice president were found in a former private office space. The White House says the president's personal lawyers discovered around a dozen documents just days before the midterms and turned them over immediately. Republicans are drawing comparisons to the investigation into former President Trump's handling of hundreds of classified materials, which President Biden called irresponsible. Those classified documents were known before the election and was intentionally concealed to the Americans. I think that's wrong. I was briefed about this discovery and surprised to learn that there were any government records that were taken there to that office. But I don't know what's in the documents. The attorney general has assigned a Trump appointed U.S. attorney to review the matter. House Republicans are signaling an investigation of their own. Tonight, Southern California continues to get slammed by heavy and damaging rains. In some areas, 10 inches of rain has fallen on the drought-stricken region in the last 12 hours. Several days of rain have led to deadly flooding, downed trees and mudslides. In Los Angeles, it caused a large sinkhole that swallowed at least two cars. Tonight, thousands continue to be without power. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joins us now with the weather first forecast. A beautiful, mild day today, Scott. You couldn't, it was hard to believe we're in the middle of January. Yeah, it's January, and you're right. You walk outside, temperatures are around 60 degrees, and it's going to happen again tomorrow. We're still in the 40s right now around St. Louis. Our skies have been partly cloudy. We've had those high clouds rolling in during the overnight hours here so far this evening. Likely to keep them around through the overnight. Even some low clouds drifting in from the south. 47 is our current temperature. The dew point's 35. Probably not going to see a lot of fog tonight in terms of really thick visibility, kind of reducing fog, but there could be a little bit of light fog around. We were at 59 for the high today. Our average high is 40 degrees this time of year in St. Louis. Still in the 40s right now. There are some low clouds creeping in from southern Missouri. They're moving in towards Farmington, Perryville, and down into Reynolds County, Iron County right now. So partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies through the overnight. We're seeing temperatures, though, bottoming out in the lower 40s. That means we start above our average high tomorrow morning out the door, and then we're close to 60 degrees. We do expect it to be mostly cloudy tomorrow. Some sun breaks, but they're definitely limited. Bad news for the folks in California. The storm system is still lining up out here in the Pacific. The one that came ashore today, that dropped some funnel clouds just south of Fresno. Of course, a lot of heavy rainfall. The one that came in about 36 hours ago is the one that's headed our way in about 36 hours. It's spreading some mountain snows now across Utah into Colorado, into the Four Corners region. This is what we're tracking going into tomorrow. So tomorrow evening, shower and thunderstorm chances over southern Missouri start to increase. That creeps our way through the overnight hours and into early on Thursday. At the same time with the system sliding by, we're starting to pull the colder air in going into the early hours on Thursday. So there's probably going to be a bit of a changeover to a little bit of wet snow. Briefly, here's a better future cast. We're kind of tighter now. This is your weather first future cast taking us through the overnight hours and into early in the morning here on Thursday. During the rush hour, you can expect to see about 30 to maybe 60, 90 minutes of wet snow either mixing in 
or that brief changeover, and then it shifts off to the east. The winds pick up. They'll be gusting 30 to 35 miles per hour, and temperatures will be dropping off. That'll leave us with wind chills by Friday morning in the 15 to 20 degree range. Mm -hmm. Yep, it'll feel like January for a change, but that's not coming until Thursday morning. 60 for your high on Wednesday, and even though we get cold Thursday, and into Friday over the weekend we warm back up and Monday MLK day 58 degrees with a chance of wow. some more rain in St. Louis. All right, Scott, thanks. Frank is here with sports. The Blues played a thriller tonight at Enterprise. We'll take you into the locker room and two brothers who live in the same house squared off on the hardwood. Stick around, please. The Sports Desk is brought to you by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. The Blues began the second half of the season tonight, and when you're basically in 11th place, you have to come out on fire against the Flames. Let's head to Enterprise. Good news to start. The late, great Dan Kelly was voted into the National Sports Media Hall of Fame. Son John had to be proud. Congrats to that broadcasting dynasty family. The Blues on the power play. Pavel Buchnevich will shoot it. It goes off a defenseman for the goal. Blues up 1-0 in the first. Nikki Glazer says, let's have some fun. And they did in the third. Down 3-1. Steven Santini shoots it. Nikita Alexandrov rebounds it. We have a 3-2 game. Later, Jordan Cairo, loose puck, toe drag, goal number 20. We are tied at three. So let's go to overtime. Here are the best two players in the organization. Cairo passing, Robert Thomas shooting. Blues win 4-3. We kind of looked at each other going up the ice, and I had a pretty good idea what he was planning on doing. So a uh, great play by him, and I just had to get it up off the ice. The Billikens will host former Mizzou star Kim English and George Mason tomorrow. The two teams have identical records in the conference and have identical records overall, but you have to hold serve at home. Today, in a revealing article by Stu Durando in the Post-Dispatch, Terrence Hargrove Jr. went public with his battle with depression. He declared on social media that he had regained his happiness. He revealed his dark moments, but wanted to share his story to help others. He's a wonderful young man from East St. Louis, and the coach was pleased with his honesty. So it's good to see, you know, TJ, who everyone sees as a fun-loving, happy-go-lucky, the most energetic guy on our team when he plays, to understand that there is a life outside of this that's going on. Uh, and that's true for any one of these young men. Illinois and Brad Underwood at Nebraska and Coleman Hawkins will soar baseline right here and watch him ram it home. Later, look at this ball movement. A little baseline, top of the key, baseline. That's Matthew Meyer for the three. Illinois starting to gel. They roll 76 to 50. Hey, I love this. The pride of Kirkwood, and now the coach of Kirkwood and Mizzou legend, told me today he was truly driven to succeed. For me, man, it, it, it was all about changing my family dynamic. Um, you know, that, that, that was always my goal. Um, you know, from where I come from, you know, growing up in Meacham Park, um, you know, it was always my goal, man, just to make it and, um, and to put myself in position, like I said, to change my family's dynamic. Let's head to Ledoux for a brotherly battle. This is Jack Steinbach for Ledoux, and this is Max Steinbach for John Burroughs. They guarded each other some, and Jack is going to use that screen and knock down the jumper there. Later, watch Max with the left hand off glass in traffic. Ledoux won it 57-49 in overtime. So what was it like for mom watching? Amazing, <laughs> nerve-wracking, but awesome because they are best friends and they are the best players in my opinion, and I'm super proud of them at all times. And who you're rooting for? Both of them. <laughs> and did you notice the jacket? I was going to say, John did she Burroughs? split it? <laughs> yes, half will do. That was well done. I yes, love it. Yep. Thanks, Frank. All righty. Sliders for your sweetheart. Romantic dinners are back. And that's not all White Castle is offering this Valentine's Day. Changes are coming to your Instagram feed. A new navigation bar will roll out next month. The shopping tab will be removed from the main bar. Reports say Instagram is looking to pull back on its shopping features.
Well, you can sleep tight. The bed bugs are biting less in St. Louis. That's according to Orkin's annual Top 50 Bed Bug Cities list. Ooh. St. Louis ranks 25th, but we were 18th last year. Chicago ranks number one for the third straight year. Then New York, Philly, Cleveland, and L.A. round out the top five. White Castle will once again become Love Castle on February 14th. For the first time in two years, the fast food chain is offering in-person fine dining for Valentine's Day. You have to make reservations on OpenTable.com. White Castle is also selling Valentine's Day merch online, including this silk robe. Now you know what you're doing on Valentine's That's Day. That's right. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Leslie Jones is Jimmy's guest. Start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. And have a great tomorrow.